In my opinion, James Lawrence is the epitome of a true backwoods Arkansas mountain hunter. He's never vied for attention. He's never asked for recognition. He doesn't have a Facebook account, nor does he email. But he was killing deer consistently in the Washita Mountains before it was cool. James grew up in rural Polk County where he was taught to deer hunt by his grandmother. She taught him that patience was the only thing that would bring success. The only thing that can compete with deer hunting for James is bear hunting right near his home in Arkansas. Time has taken its standard toll on James physically, but I admire that it hasn't dampened his desire an ounce. The fire in his belly still burns hot. He's always ready to go, never wants to take a day off, never ready to go home early, and is always willing to try something new. His spirit of adventure rewarded him in 2016 when he traveled with me to Saskatchewan for what was in his words, the adventure of a lifetime. However, the best part of any far off adventure of this magnitude is always coming home. See, coming home. That was a rough ride, wasn't it? Man, look at that dark cloud. Jeez. Oh wow. On day three of our hunt with Bear Pro Safaris, James reflected on the trip. What we come here for the adventure. Safari. Yeah, northern yeah. safari. Northern safari. I can't think of another place I'd rather be sitting right now. This is backwoods. No cars, no planes, no trains, no automobiles. I had no idea there was such a place like this. Seen it on TV, read it in magazines, experienced our wilderness in the backwoods of Arkansas. Had no idea that there was this much country, this much water, this much wildlife, this much freedom to hunt. Very thankful for it. Uh, there's no comparison to this and the way I was brought up hunting. But, uh, it's just a different way of hunting. After five days of adventure-filled hunting, on day six, the final evening of the hunt for James, Colby decided to take him in to a new bait that we accessed via the Hagaland track machine, which was about four miles from camp. The weather is just getting worse, and it's starting to, uh, the tracks will only hold you up so long, and then you start cutting the root system every time you go over it a little more, and then pretty soon you end up dropping into it. So we're just trying to sneak around on some higher ground. We had to go through some nasty peat bogs that no machinery on the planet could have made it through except for a track we're machine like this. We're out of the woods. Wow, back on solid ground. As we went to the bait, everything looked good. The bait had been hit and we felt like this was going to be the hunt that had culminated throughout the week and was going to end in success for James. Mm -hmm. 
We sat for about an hour and a bear appeared. It was the last day of the hunt and James decided to take this beautiful bear with the white crest on its chest. The bear displayed some aggressive posture as it came in directly downwind of us. After the shot, we quickly saw and realized that the shot was low and back. And to make a long story short, we never found the bear. We looked for it the next day with about five guys. We never retrieved the bear. And now it was time to go home. James coming home without a bear was hard for me. He didn't let on if it was hard for him or not. All he could talk about was how glad he was that he was even there in such a wild place. It must have stung him a little though because I did notice the fire burned extra hot in the fall of 2016 in Arkansas. And he was rewarded with a fantastic when I was homecoming. Really young, I lived with my grandmother and granddad. Uh, my granddad gave me this property uh, and no electricity, no running water. Uh, and it was an old mining claim, I guess, but it's in the mountains, so it's it's a good location for bear. I didn't think about the bears being there until Clay Newcomb and one of his buddies come over and baited and, and they got a bear the first year. There's a big bear over here we call <laughs> Sasquatch. Or Clay named it Sasquatch. I don't know that he'll be coming in. I don't know if he's still there, but he's um, he's in the area if somebody didn't take him. It looked like it was slammed. I'm sure it has. It's tilted over and lids off. So. I'm sure it has. It it's was it was hit hard the other day. Yeah. See so yesterday at four o'clock. Is that a big bear? Like a yeah. big bear? Yeah. It's not a cell. What might be hard to understand is that in late September, the acorns have started to fall. And in Arkansas, we're hunting stragglers. And usually, it's not our target bears. James and cameraman Brent Reeves set from 2.30 until just before 6 o'clock when they saw a bear coming up out of the hollow. When the bear came into view, it was clear that it was a shooter. This was a big, mature bear.
slick trick done it, didn't it? Right we need to wait before we train them up. First afternoon of the That is a good pass through. Look down the holler and see coming up the holler from the southeast. Had his head right on the ground. I thought he was not going to be a shooter. That's when I told you there's one coming. And then when he come on up, he, uh, we decided, or I decided he was a shooter. Walked up and looked, busted us. I mean, looked right at us. Stood there. Stood there and stood there. Finally turned and started toward the, the bait barrel and he stopped behind the camera tree. He gave me about half of his body in front of it, shoulder, good shoulder shot. And I let that slick trick loose and he didn't go out of sight. Wow. That'll make you die. We're gonna make some bear fat something. This right here. Back in the day, this was like currency. This was like holding a ten dollar bill in your hand. And the irony of the master plan just has to make you laugh. After traveling 1500 miles to hunt in Saskatchewan, James ends up killing a bear within a half mile of home. Oftentimes the glitter and shine of going out casts a shadow on the treasure of coming home. <laughs>